Hi guys, it is Wednesday night. It is 7.32, right on time. I'm Maria Sansone. This is Mom to Mom. This is a glass of Sauvignon Blanc, okay? And I need it tonight. Whew. I'm gonna take a sip. Say hi to my friends who are jumping in. Hi, Emily. I see Jill is standing by, who's my guest tonight. Um, I'm gonna introduce her in just a second, but as I said, mama needs a drink. Hold on. All right, so this is Mom to Mom. We do this every week. Really, it's kind of an excuse for me to drink wine and talk to my friends live and check in with all of you at the same time. Um, tonight is going to be extra special because I had probably one of my very first <laughs> mental um, breakdowns, meltdowns, whatever you want to call it today. So I need... Um, a good mom friend tonight. I need a good mom chat. I need to drink this Sauvignon Blanc. Um, so let me introduce you to my guest tonight. Her name is Jill Simonian. She is an author. She's a writer. She's a blogger. She's, and I hate using this term, parenting expert, because who really is an expert in parenting? However, Jill has done over 200 parenting segments on TV shows from the Today Show to the Doctors. So she knows what she's talking about, okay? Um, she's written a book called The Fab Mom's Guide. So we'll get into that as well. She lives out in Los Angeles, which is where we met. And I think it's time to introduce Jill Simonian. Hi, Jill. Hi. Cheers. Of course. Of course. Cheers. To That's you. a nice pour you got there. Thank you. It's well, maybe I needed it too today, Maria. Okay. So let's, first of all, I haven't seen you in quite a while. We used to do a lot of fun TV segments together out in LA because that's your jam. You are all over the place all the time doing your know. parenting segments. So first of all, how are you? How are the girls? Tell everyone about your family. Okay. So first of all, we're great. Thank you for having me. It is so good to see you. Hi, Boston and all surrounding areas. I'm very. It is. It's very very hot in LA right now. But um, we're doing great. My daughters are eight and nine. We've been homeschooling for the past million days, five <laughs> weeks, six weeks. I literally like. I don't know anymore. Um, it's, it's you know part of the routine. So we've been homeschooling. We've been doing inexplicably. Inexplic. I, I'm not. I I haven't had enough of this to not be able to say inexplicably. But we've been doing remarkable. <laughs> Such big words. You don't have to. It's just us. We've just been doing friends. pretty good. We've been doing pretty good. And um, you know, I, I'm my husband is a you know he's a surgeon and he hasn't been working very much, but kind of sort of working on certain you know emergency only types of things. But we've been doing okay. But it's it's been you know six weeks later, we're all sort of at a limit here. So your husband is a plastic surgeon. Yeah. And you know, we have so much to talk about. You have so much to offer with tips and homeschooling and wonderful things. But I do want to know, is he able to give you Botox at home in this off season? The world yeah. needs to know. We, we haven't done it. We haven't done it. That's a good question. And I appreciate it fully. Um, you know, I get the text from friends all the time. Is he doing it? I, I have not had it at home, luckily. Times are tough. Though. Through all of this beginning, I did make a visit to his office because he prefers that I go into the office. He really does. Yeah. So I hope that answered it a little bit. But this is more wine and I'll, I mean, more wine and I'll disclose more. Okay, good. <laughs> You'll have a line out the door. Um, but friends, we are not here to talk Botox, although we absolutely can because this is a mom chat. <laughs> and honestly, when you get to a certain age and when you're out to dinner with girlfriends. These things come up, lasers, peels, Botox, like what are you doing? How are you doing it? Are we coloring our hair in the quarantine? Are we not? How are we getting our gel nails off? You name it. I have none. I don't have any nails. There's no nails. And I bought that. Here's another fun fact. Right before the last day my kids' school said, okay, you know, we're canceling school from here on out. I made a trip to my hairdresser to get my roots redone because I had a bad feeling that we were going to be in this for the long haul. So about one more week, I, I do the false spray. I do the little falsy spray, which is holding me over. But two more weeks, it's going to be bad news. It's going to be bad news. and But we're all sort of in this together. 
we're all going to see everyone's true colors, if you will. So I want to say hi to some of our friends who are jumping in tonight. Michelle, Charlene. Charlene says these are South Coast, South Coast pours. We call these North North Shore pours. Um, but you know, it's a Boston thing. Um, Marcy's here tonight. She said she brought some wine to her sister-in-laws and they're watching tonight. Um, so lots of fun people tuning in. Yeah. So, all right. So I want to get to some of the tips because you have some really what I think are practical, almost seem like common sense tips for staying sane, yet also being super productive while you're at home with kids during this, I guess I'm calling it the off season. The off season. That's a good word. Let's call it the off season. I'm sick of quarantine and all, like the off season. I don't know what else to call it. Um, a lot of us are working from home and trying to just keep it all together. So you've come up with some what I think are just some like great tips. So let's start with your morning routine. How do you start your day? How do you gear up to make it a really good day? Okay, so the morning routine, like you said, I I am very low. Okay, people look at me from the outside. They see my website, the Fab Mom. They think it's like high maintenance. This that it's not. Fab is focused after babies, and I'm all about staying grounded, fierce in my beliefs. And, you know, I want other moms and women to be fierce in their beliefs, too, and to just be very grounded and having common sense. So the most basic thing that I do to start my day is the whole gratitude awareness. I literally and I kid you not. I mean, I happen to I'm Christian. I'm religious. I go to church weekly. I teach Sunday school. But what I do every morning is I open my eyes. And the first thing I say is, thank you, God, for this day. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be God. Even if you just say, thank you for this day. Thank you that my eyes are open today again for another day. It helps me a lot. And I find that on the days that I don't do it, things go to, you know, hell in a handbasket pretty quickly. So I try and do it every day when I wake up. Well, that's a really good thought to just even just take that moment, take a deep breath, have a gratitude moment for yourself in the morning before you jump out of bed and start all the insanity. Yeah, and I don't ever jump out of bed. Never jump out of bed, are you kidding me? (laughs) I gotta tell you, there's days where the first thing I do is I look at my phone. Stop, 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 stop. I love you, girl, but okay, that's like the right, you have to open your eyes, you say thank you for this day, and then you have to focus as hard as you can to get your body out of the bed before you pick up the phone. I'm daring you to do it tomorrow. I have to ask our our viewers who are watching, everyone who's tuning in right now, are you people who look at your phone straight away in the morning? And can we make a pact to not do that together, at least during the off season? for Fridays. Maybe it will spill over. Um, so another thing that you do with your girls is chores. And yeah. I mean, we all have chores to do. And a lot of times mom has to deal with the majority of them. But being able to delegate to, I mean, your daughters are eight and nine, you said? Eight and nine. Yeah, they're older. They're and older. They certainly they're help. So talk about some of the chores that you're doing at home. Okay. So here, so the things that we do at home, I mean, you know, along with our homeschool and everything, we, uh, We start our day and making the bed is a huge thing. And I hate making my bed and I've always hated making my bed. And I think it's a pain in the butt, (laughs) but it's one of the tips that I actually, I put in my book, which I know that you mentioned and we'll talk about later, but it's one of the tips that I put in my book, making the bed. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be Martha Stewart. It doesn't have to be, you know, the, the end all bed making. If you just pull the covers and make the bed as quickly as you can, no matter what kind of day you've had at the end of the day. It, no matter, it could have been the worst day in the whole world, but when you go back to your bed that night, it's made, it's nice. You feel as though, wow, we did something positive today. If that's the only thing there is, then that's the only thing there is. But you've got to make the bed. And I tell my girls, um, you know, make the bed, make the bed. And sometimes we don't even make the bed till like 11 a.m. or, you know, noon or after lunch. But guess what? It has to be made before you go to bed that night because that's 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 the little rule and it keeps me feeling positive at the end of the day no matter what 
It does. I like what Michelle Weber is saying. She says, I always say you are a grown up when you make a bed every day. Yes. And, uh, you know, it's not sometimes it isn't every day. Sometimes it isn't. And that's OK. But if that's the one thing that you can do, that that helps me. That I mean, these are little things, but little yeah. things make a big impact. I've mm -hmm. noticed. They do. And they do. I want to jump ahead to something else that we've talked about, which is also a small chore, which is loading the dishwasher yeah. before you go to bed. And yeah. it's so funny that this is something you do because this was not something I always did. Um, but right now we are going through so many dishes. Sometimes I have to run the dishwasher twice a day. Me but too. I do try, 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 try to make a point to, to put the dishes in the dishwasher and put that stuff in and close it up before bed. And it, I'm gonna tell you, is a game changer. It is. It is. And I feel it's funny because when I talk about this stuff, like all of a sudden, like here with you, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, what is this? Is this 1950? We're talking about like, the, like what are we doing? But we are home, like, how can I say we need to at this time? What, what was the word you used it? Uh, the off season. The off season. During this off season, I think it's best for all of us if we completely lower the bar. Like, you know, literally lower the expectations, lower the bars for each day, because the way I operate, if I feel positive about two things that happened that I did that made me feel a little bit more organized, it's a lot better than feeling negative about, you know, four things that didn't happen. So yeah. the loading of the dishwasher to me, I hate it. I complain about it. My husband makes fun of me because he's like, why do you get so worked up? Because I do. But if loading it at night and running it at night I wake up in the morning and it's like it's like the yes it's, it's like the bed being made when you go to bed at the end of the day it's like you wake up in the morning and your sink is relatively right. empty and you feel like you're at least starting with a clean slate it makes I, all the difference. I think it speaks to this bigger idea of the world around us is really chaotic right now yeah. There's a lot of anxiety. So if yes. we can control a few small, simple things in our household, because Lord knows we can't control our kids. <laughs> so yes. If we can put the dishes away and make our beds, <laughs> maybe we'll feel like accomplished moms. Raylene, I have, I have a game changer for you. Like the 60s. Oh, I have a game changer for you that I just thought about, because I remember, how old are your kids? Um, six and creeping on three almost. Okay. So if you haven't already, and I know that you're a fab, fabulous fab mom focused after baby. I know, I know all about you, Maria Sansone. I know you're good. But if you haven't started with the habit, uh, with teaching your three-year-old the habit of taking their plate or cups up to the sink after every meal, start now. It starts at three. It starts at two. If you can like, I call them like train my little puppies. I trained my little puppies from the age of two, take your plate or your cup or your napkin in the trash, take it up to the sink whenever you're done with anything. Yeah. And it's sort of like with that, you know, they're toddlers. They don't know what they're doing. They just get in the habit of doing it. So yeah. now my kids, they automatically, everything goes in the sink. Everything goes in the sink. At least they put it there. I will say my little Benny, he is. <laughs> He's so cute. Wonderful. Oh He's so but cute. Boy, is he a terror. <laughs> and, but. That little stinker, he does take his little juice cup and he does put it in the sink and he waddles over there and puts his stuff away, throws stuff in the trash. So that is good. Is he writing on all my furniture? He is. Is my whole entire house need to be like burned to the ground and start fresh yeah. after this? It does. <laughs> it's okay. But the plates are where they're supposed to be. So what's good. Good. where they're supposed to be? My bed is made. Uh, Kathy's saying I can get the dishes in the dishwasher. I hate taking them out. Me I too. Hate taking them out. Me too. We do sound like housewives, but honestly, there is. It's a bit. Raylene was saying it's a little bit of a throwback to the '60s. You had mentioned the '50s. Um, there's parts of this I'm really kind of enjoying, this simpler lifestyle, the hunkering down, being home all the time, cooking all the meals, being there for one another. There's parts of it that are absolutely bananas. 
But there are some things that I think when this is all said and done that we can actually really grow from and that I think we're going to take with us. And just like the simplicity of it all, don't you think? I do. I agree. In fact, there's uh, there are many pieces that I've written about on my uh, blog before all of this ranting about how I couldn't wrap my head around this go, 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 go lifestyle that we've all sort of, you know, been doing mindlessly because everyone else has been doing it. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and for me, like I would always talk about how I refuse to put my girls in no more than like two activities per week. Like we have two dance classes and a piano lesson and we're done with activities. We're done. We're, you know, that that's what we're doing. That's what we're yeah. trying right now because we've just been spinning and spinning and hunkering down being forced to be at home and really prioritize what we like, what we can afford, what is working for us, what's not serving us. I think it's a really good time. I agree with you. Yeah. So there's been a lot of talk about, you always hear about kids and screen time and kids being on their devices. And right now, Anything goes. But right. let's talk about mom being on the device and uh -huh. mom's screen time and how it can be really quite depressing. Mm -hmm. It can cause a lot of anxiety. Mm -hmm. um, I think we need to check ourselves a little bit here with yeah. all the digital stuff. Yeah, we definitely do. And it's interesting because, um, I mean, you said today was your day of awful, awful day. This last weekend, I've been genuine. I'm not lying when I say everyone here is fine and we're all doing well and we're all coping and we're fine. However, on Sunday, for me, everything came oh, crashing down. And I literally, I mean, I've dealt with anxiety for the past two and a half years. Um, ever since my mom died, I've dealt with anxiety and it was linked to grief. And then now it's sort of evolved into anxiety about other things, fear of X, Y, Z, whatever. Um, but Sunday came crashing down and I attributed it partially to just constantly being on the phone. I'm trying to look for updates. I'm, you know, and then you're on Facebook and then there's not a lot of positives, unfortunately, sometimes on Facebook and you get caught up in those and it, and it just crashed. And I, I said, okay, you know what, this week I'm not going to do the phone except for like 20 minutes in the morning you know, 10 minutes in the afternoon. And then, you know, I'll do a final scroll for the news to get information, like maybe at the end of the day. And I really limited myself and I felt so such a difference. I mean, we know how addictive it is. We know how it can, you know, we can get entrenched in it and it can pull us down, but it made such a difference. It did. So I'm a full on addict. I know. <laughs> I'm an addict. And I also, let me put that in context. Someone's going to take that out. I'm an addict. Um, but no, I am. I'm addicted to the phone. And I also deal with some anxiety. And a lot of it kicked in for me. I never really felt anxiety until postpartum after my daughter was born. It started. And I kind of didn't know what I was dealing with and what it was. And then when my son was born, and then I was in it again. It was very clear what I was kind of going through. Um, for me, I had a crashing down thing today where I just, I noticed this weekend I started obsessing about things. Like yeah. I was cleaning my kitchen table like a crazy person for like and an hour. It's not coming off. Yeah. And you're mad at it. Yeah. Like scraping like mm -hmm. off the table. And yeah. I at least have the wherewithal where I know, okay, I'm starting to kind of spiral here go outside, go for a walk, do the things, breathe. You know all the things you're supposed to do. Yes, and the things, yes. everything was like kind of okay. And then today I was trying, I'm working from home. So I'm trying to do TV stuff. You know, you have to look right. You have to sound right. Sometimes you have to memorize lines. It needs to be quiet. The dog can't be barking. The kids can't, don't need snacks. And I'm trying to do all these things and they're in my ear and I'm sweating. I'm trying to set up my shot and the light. And I totally had a meltdown, like a melt. Okay. Um, Marlene says, Maria, it is system overload. Yes, Absolutely. it is. Absolutely. And you know, it there's is. so many, there's so much happening outside, right? On this macro level. And then in our own little worlds, because they're very small right now too. Yeah. Yeah, we can't go anywhere. It's there. We're in it. We we can walk outside. We can go in our yard. We can go on the street. But it's we can't 
can't go. <laughs> you know, like, oh, I wanted to just run away. It's like yeah. the fight or flight kicked in. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> it's true. It's true. And I always say, because, you know, I've been accused in the past of saying, like, or, you know, I've been accused of putting forth this persona, like, oh, you have to be strong. You have to be strong. Yes, you have to be strong. But yes, break. And as long as we break and allow ourselves to break, if we we break, we lay there, we get, we, you know, absorb the break. And then you, I say, okay, then you got to bounce back up and go at it a second time. But yes, absolutely break. Because otherwise, how, we, you can't hold it in. You can't. <laughs> I mean, yes. If you need to get in the fetal position and lay on your couch <laughs> for a, a good half hour and say, mommy is unwell, do not speak to me. You have to, you have to. And I'll tell you, there's, not, you know, as long as the kids are safe, I remember, I think, you know, when my daughters were like five and six, I, I used like kindergarten as a marker, you know, like, oh, they're at school, they're at kindergarten, you know, they can function on by themselves. If the kids are five or six, it is a-okay to turn the television on their show, lay on the couch and tell them mommy needs to close her eyes. Like, I mean, this, you got to depend on your own kids and you got to know your own kids. But like that also shows them people need to take breaks. People need to retreat so that we can go back out and do what we do what we need to do. You know? Yes. Michelle is asking what my meltdown looks like. <laughs> that throw things cry. <laughs> um, it's for me breaking equipment. <laughs> It's, you know, it's work related and I had, you know, I'm working with what I got. I think all of us can relate to, we got thrown into this thing. So you're working with what you have at home. For me, it's lights and tripods and things. And I'm not good at that. There are people who are really, really good at that. And I miss them and I love them more than ever. Um, yeah, for me, it's like swearing and kind of like almost breaking things. Um, but again, there are little people around, so we can't do that. Um, I want to talk about your book because I love your book. I have your book and it's such a great book for new moms. So if any of our people out there have new moms, um, or moms to be the fab mom's guide is such a great book. So tell us again, what fab stands for. We don't want to misrepresent what it's <laughs> all about. Well, fa fab can act. It's if fab is about feeling your best doing your best for any given situation you're in. And FAB, I like to use it as an acronym for focused after babies. And for me, uh, you know, I wrote the book, my babies came back to back. And, you know, I mean, I, I wrote the book and launched three years ago. I gave it to you and you were pregnant for the first time, I think. But um, it's about staying uh, positively in control of what you can control that first time that you become a mom and you don't know what the heck is going on. And you know, you've got all this information coming at you and there's all these different choices that you can make. And my book is a lot of personal stories that I had. It's a lot of fun celebrity stories. And it's all about having confidence to make the fierce choices that you need to make for the good of you and your family. So it's about making positive choices. And um, and it's, it's a, I, had a, I had a fabulous time writing it. And, um, you know, there's some things that I look back on and I'm like, oh, been there, done that. But it's it's part of, you know, part of being a brand new mom. It's figuring a lot of things out. And so it always helps to hear other people's stories. So that's it what's really cool. does. And that's what this that's what I want to do with this show, too, is being in the mom squad. You can always use another friend. You can always yeah. use more support. So I just want people to feel that they're not alone, that there are other people out there who are having meltdowns, breakdowns, um, you know, so you can just hear us. Charlene saying, Jill, how do you shut work off when you're surrounded by work 24 seven in this environment? It's it's kind of hard to differentiate when work stops and, and home begins because we're working from home. I think it's important to that you have to set the schedule. Even with like my kids, I mean, I, I myself am not working right now, so I'm, I, I don't have that particular challenge in front of me, but whenever you have any kind of work you have to do, whether it's homeschooling kids or whether it's working for yourself or working for someone else, you definitely need to set a schedule. Um, and one of our schedules, for instance, with my kids, school, school for them is from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. 10 a.m. We say a pledge of allegiance and then we get going on our lessons. 
And then we have lunch at 11.30 and I let them play till 12.30 and then we do another hour and a half of school and we are done at two. And then they go play and then I say, okay, 2.30 to 3.30 is my time to get done emails, you know, whatever work I might need to do or, you know, to set time limits and then also share it with your kids. Say, okay, these are our time limits at 3.30 you're going to be doing this. I'm going to be doing this. We're a team. We've got to do this together. Are you on board? And if your yeah. kids are little and brainwashed like mine, they're like, yeah. <laughs> well, I, think, I do think it makes kids feel really secure. And it goes yeah. back to what we, were, what we were talking about, just having the home feel, you know, that you have something under control. So for kids to know that they have a plan, it may not stay on the plan, but to know right. that okay, here's what's going to happen. And then after this, we're going to do that. And after this, we're going to do that. Your kids are older. So I don't know what kind of homeschool mom I would be if my kids actually had real work because my daughter's in kindergarten and my little guy, you know. There's no work. Yeah, there's no, yeah. You're in the hard, you're in the very, very hard stage. Who dismissed? I yeah. mean, I'm just. You don't need to be doing school. You're literally, I think of toddler school as, okay, we do coloring. And then you do TV, and then you do a game, and then you do coloring. It's like you just rotate the activity. And then you write on my white couch, and then you write on the wall, and the mommy cleans the wall, and the mommy cleans the couch, and the mommy puts the stuff in the washer and takes you're giving, it. Now you're giving me a panic. Now you're giving me anxiety. It's just real life. Sorry. Um, okay, final thoughts. This goes way too fast. I absolutely love, love, love these catch-ups, but they go way too fast. Yeah. So final thoughts. Someone was asking us what our guilty pleasures are right now. So what would you say is your guilty pleasure? I watched Tiger King. I'm watching The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. I'm watching The Kardashians. Um, I'm wa What else am I watching? Those are those three right now. I mean, those those are. I love mindless television, and it drives my husband nuts. But that is my guilty pleasure. And then I'm picking at the chocolates. You know, I go and I get the the leftover Easter candy. That's mm -hmm. the those are the those are the guilty pleasures. So chocolate and trashy TV. Trashy TV. I like it. Well, sometimes you just have to shut it down at night, and so. That's where I, my husband cannot be in the room if any of the Real Housewives are on. So that's like, go, go. And I watch my Real Housewives. Wine, of course, is another guilty pleasure. Yes. Oh, yeah, I have you. <laughs> wine went from like just a weekend thing to a, hey, Tuesday, Saturday, and Sunday's Monday, and Wednesday's exactly. Friday. So. Exactly. Um, what else? Guilty pleasure. You know what I like when I can do it is a bath. It doesn't happen often, but that's like a really nice, healthy habit. That's good. And see, I don't do that. So I should. Part. You should do that. Light a candle. I nice should music, do that. Get a little lavender. Occasionally, I put a face mask on, and my kids like laugh at me. They like giggle. Mommy, mommy, why do you have that on? Yeah, that's yeah. I think face masks. Pe people are going crazy with the face masks now. People are going crazy. crazy. I'm not doing the TikTok. I know all these, everyone, mom, everyone's on TikTok now. I just, I can't do it. Can't I'm done. going to refrain from the TikTok, I, at least for now. At least for now. Yeah. I dance around anyway. I don't need yeah, to. You're good. You're good. So, Jill, thank you so much. Aw, thanks. So good to see you. Hugs and kisses to everyone in your house. Um, I hope you stay sane during the, what we've now called the off season. Officially. I like your word. Your word, your word wins off season. <laughs> All right. So good to see you. You too. Bye. <laughs> and for the rest of you guys, thank you so much for tuning in. If I did not catch your comment tonight, do not worry. As soon as this show is over, I sit down with my wine and I scroll through your comments and I will respond to each and every one of you. Um, so if anyone has any last thoughts, let me know. Otherwise, I'll respond back tonight. But thank you all so much for sharing your time with us tonight. And I hope you caught a few tips. I think that I got a, some really good ones from Jill, just like those simple common sense things like making your bed and putting the dishes away and stuff like that. It really does go a long way. Um, and it's just good to know that there's other moms out there that are also having some anxiety and having some breakdowns and just not being so perfect. Because guess what? Nobody is. <laughs> so guys, have a great night. 
We'll see you next week for another edition of Mom to Mom. Love ya.